a video here and explain a possible technique for fixing a, a drawing artifact in this uh, isometric sorting scheme. So right here we see we have this problem box, or this bounding box, you should, you should say. As you can see that is about his box right there, and you can see his arm comes outside of it, which is that could be fixed by scaling up the size of the box so that it contains him, but that would just uh, make for some bad sizes, right? That would be obnoxious to have all the, uh, the, the boxes, the collision, these are for collision too, right? So these would be so large that they would, they would just be uh, well, not much fun to play if they were that big, honestly, right? Too much space and gap between the players. So that's preferable to keep them out, you know, to any size we want, right? But what we see here is because this is drawn, the order which this is drawn, right? This is sorted, and then it is drawn in in levels from the bottom to the top, right? So we would so at this tile right here, you can see this tile draws, and then this second tile in front draws of the of the character, and then the uh, second layer draws, and then it clips his hand on the bottom here, which is which is the problem. And you can see. Here is another similar situation where we have um, we have it from the other side where we have the uh, the uh, red part of you know, the, the first level of this player is drawn first, and this tile is drawn second, and then the second half of the player is drawn, and that section right there clips the uh, clips that that tile right. So you know this. The way that the um, that the sprites were split in the game, so that they followed the isometric axis, was not is not enough to quite fix that problem. If this this is even a well scaled sprite, and it's just a bit of its arm pops out in this one angle, even so, I mean it would be so finicky to fix those. So the proposed solution, which I'm going to try, is going to be to make a a depth buffer which is based on the sorting values, which are already known because these are pre-sorted in advance of, um, of, of uh, drawing anything right at this step. So this is not like a, a proper like uh, 3D pipeline Z buffer, right? These are still all flat sprites. There's no Z value in them. So, so here is a, uh, here's a mock-up of that one scenario with it with the hand clipped, and we see we have the uh, the sorting order followed by the level, right? So 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 0, 2, 1. So in this order, you can see here that 1, 0 draws, and then 2, 0 draws, right? And then go to the next level. 1, 1 draws, and 2, 1 draws. We get that effect still. So what we can do is we can do a, a first pass, and um, you write to this, to a uh, a buffer which stores just the, the sorting information, which is represented here by this color, right? So here would be the first layer, the second layer, and the top, and that other top right, the player. So what this is going to do is, um, is well, it is during both passes. Well, I'll start from the depth buffer. From the depth buffer, it's going to say that it will fill any of these pixels so long as there is not something which is in front and behind of it, right? A front being, you know, like this yellow is in front of that and it's, you know, the yellow is below the purple, right? Below in terms of the levels. So here, how this would look would be like, um, I can take this out right now. You can see what we could, this would start by writing the, uh, the red and then writing the yellow part to it and then we get to the next level, you can see we would write the purple on top of this, and this would normally clip over this that hand, right? But what we're saying here is that because the, the hand is in front and below, that we're going to then discard that portion of the depth buffer. So that would actually that would actually cut away that uh, you know, the uh, the purple part and expose the yellow hand. I'm not going to draw that, but you can imagine how that would happen. And then we get to the next part, and, uh, oops, 
Do we have that working there? There we go. So we can see, yes, that would then just draw on top. There's nothing that is in front or behind that blue portion, so it just goes right over. So what we have here is we've, we've uh, encoded the sorting values into this depth buffer, right? And uh, um, there could be some slop around the edges where there's um, transparency, but I'm, I don't know yet. I'm going to have to see how this works. So when we get back to this top example here, we can do something similar where we um, see what it would be like to draw. So we start with this bottom level first, draw this, right? Draw the second one, one zero to two zero. That's all fine. And we get to the top level again. And now we have this problem where, okay, we've taken out the hand, right? So what we do here is we say, is we say when we're, um, you know I explained that poorly. When we're, when we're drawing these, we're testing against the depth buffer, right? <laughs> That's the whole point of this. So we draw the first one, we see if there's anything in the depth buffer, which is in front or behind, there's not, right? We have just one zero and two zero. That all draws two zero, anything in front or behind, no, there's not. So that draws as normal. Let me get to the top level here. You can see that we have we have this portion of hand, which is in front uh, and uh, oh, I was saying front and behind, in front and below, right? So what that would do is this would say then, okay, because it is in front and below, we're going to omit those those pixels, right? We're going to discard, it, right? So it'll be something, you know, roughly like that. So, okay, we have that working. We go to the second one here. And the same thing, anything is in, is in front and below? No, there is not. So that goes right on top. And that seems to, there could be, again, you know, slop with the, uh, with the uh, transparency right on the alpha channel. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work, but it's hopefully going to be you know, minimal, very minimal, just on these, just on these edge cases, right? And I think that's that will solve this problem. And you can, you know, you could go through the same exercise here and see that we draw the yellow one first, right? And then we draw the red one first, and we get to the blue. Let's try to bring this up if we can. Can you bring that up? There we go. We're gonna come to the blue, and we say, okay, this is ready for the depth buffer too. So this. This follows the same, the same uh, rule that it discards what is what is in front and below, right? So in this case, the red is in front and below. So we would then just, you know, chop out, whoop, chop that out, right? So we would be left with a uh, with our depth buffer, which had that information missing to it. So if we go back to this example, then you can imagine that if we draw the red first and then the tile second. And then we draw this top part first. We would we would look through, right, and see if there's any and check if there's anything that's in front and below, which there would be. There would be this, you know, red portion of the tile. It would find that and it would discard those those pixels, right? Which would be this portion of the of the arm here, which is clipping through. There there's this uh, green background to show where the uh, where the sprites were split along the isometric axes. But it would just be that little portion of the arm which would be clipped. So if there was some weird, you know, some weird blending where the arm was now blended with the grass behind it or something like that, it would not be, I think it would be a small deal, you know. So, yeah, this appears to be a viable solution. It requires two passes of the renderer, which is not fantastic, but I don't think that's a huge bottleneck quite yet. So we'll see how that goes. Okay.